Journey Home, Chapter 29. He found her. He couldn't see her through the spray. He couldn't hear any cries over the water's roar. He couldn't scent her over the wild smells of a free river loaded with a bounty. He found her with a sense deeper than those, too deep to be named. Daughter. There, it directed the fox. There was a tree, a hundred years old, its core rotted through by warriors. The storm surged and ripped it out by its root a mile up river and left it half submerged at the bottom of the rapids. Caught in its tangled roots was a very small, fat fox. Pax stood in rushing shallows. His child dangled by her shoulders just beyond his reach. He barked up in gladness and fear. For another moment, she hung as empty and lifeless as a pelt. And then she opened her eyes. Bark, Pax barked again, all this joy this time. He splashed underneath her, assessing their positions. Just past the shallows, the current crashed over a jagged rock. If he missed his landing, they would be swept away. He would not miss. He leaped and caught purchase, hung on just long enough to tug his child free. He dropped into the shallows with her locked in her jaws and pulled her clear of the water. He nestled her on a hum hummock of grass and curled himself around her, reassuring her she was safe. And she was. She was sodden and limped, but she was not bleeding, and her limbs seemed unbroken. What Pax wanted most was to bring her home. The warmth of that den with her brothers and mother would stop her shaking. Bissell would surround her daughter with her fierce protection, would feed her own strength to her kit. Bristle's presence would soothe Pax, too. He longed it. Since meeting her, he had never spent this much time away from her. But the path home to Bristle was fraught with dangers. And even if none were encountered, the walking alone would do obdurous for a kit as battered and exhausted as his. There was no going home yet. He needed a shelter for here and now. He, and he knew of one, not twenty full bounds away, just above, up from the river bank, an ancient hemlock whose boughs swept against the ground, making a piney grotto underneath, where Pax had once sheltered with the old fox gray. Dark but airy, cushion, cushioned with many seasons of soft pine duff, whose scent would mask their own from predators. Before bringing her inside, he dried her with his tongue and left her in a sunny spot to warm. Then he circled the tree, nose to the ground, scenting for dangers. He found none, but noticed something else. For the first time since reaching the river, he did not scent his boy. Peter's trap had stopped abruptly at the brink of the rapids. Pax hurried back to his kit and carried her inside the hemlock skirt. He settled her near the massive trunk and lay down close beside her, alert to her every moment. Even after she fell asleep, he watched her breathing until, at last, he dropped his head over hers and closed his eyes. Only then did he sense his own injuries. A dull ache in his shoulder, his hip, right hand leg, a sharper pain in his side when he breathed deeply. The kit whimpered in a dream and bucked into his chest. And Pax understood once again that for her, he would do whatever was needed.